What's in a name? Myers. New York Meyer. You've got the modern uh, re-release of the New York Meyer, which is just making things that much more confusing. You've got Meyer copies. You've got Meyer fakes. Well, let's just look at the baffles, because the baffle sidewall chamber, that's what makes any mouthpiece, and it's really what allowed Meyer to go ahead in the in the alto game ahead of auto link so this is a, a modern Meyer I believe if not it's a really good condition uh, Babbitt uh, like 90s or 2000s um, you've got the gap in the table medium chamber made in USA let's look at that baffle there's something there uh, but it's it's pretty subtle you see it there at the end it's subtle for alto saxophone um, the chamber is is big um, you see that break is happening right right uh, right there you see it's 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 pretty subtle let's compare this to um, Probably the best alto mouthpiece I've ever played. This is a New York Meyer Bros. This is the Cannibal Adderley mouthpiece. And that baffle, you can see that refraction with the naked eye. That is a baffle. That is an incredible uh, baffle. How, how different it just... Right to the very end. Let's look at the tip rail. This extremely thin, extremely thin tip rail. And that tip to side rail ratio is uh, indicative that this is totally original. If we look at the tip rail here, that's a chunky tip rail. That's a different, that's a, that, that looks nothing, nothing like Meyer. Let's compare with, this is a slightly earlier Cannonball period uh, New York Meyer Bros. Um, and it's early, and you notice there's a lot less happening with the baffle. It's still more than the modern Meyer. It's still more uh, expertly crafted and honed into a burst of air into the horn. The tip rail is, once again, very nicely constructed. Um, once again on the modern Meyer. I mean, it's got the overall idea, but it's just so much more simplistic. The air is hitting so many hiccups here because this was not crafted by someone playing it and making it better. This was a simple, this is a simple uh, one-dimensional kind of curve. This is the curve just keeps on going to the very end, and that's the difference. Uh, this is a New York USA. It's not original. This is like the Phil Woods period, and mm, there's not quite as much there, but there's still that curving up to the very end, and you see it's still a lot more round, the chamber. Uh, let me compare that chamber with the Meyer Bros. That's a larger chamber. Um, just more air can enter. But there's a there's a sweet spot. If I go to this earlier medium chamber, it's actually an even bigger chamber. And that's almost like a large chamber of a, of a modern Meyer. So this is almost too big for me. So um, like I say, it's the baffle to chamber relationship. This is another uh, one. Uh, medium chamber so it's a little earlier and you'll see there's still more um, but here's the deal this was a three people talk about uh, tip opening so we need we need a bigger tip opening mouthpieces in the 1940s and 50s were smaller tip openings especially in the 20s yes that's true but the real reason why people like bigger tip openings is because um, what would happen is the larger the tip opening, the more baffle would be included. That's why this one is so 
special uh, because typically you would you would only see that kind of baffle on like the very rare six or seven um and this was just a, a thing that was understood the more open the tip opening uh the more baffle the more extreme the baffle needs to come up come up to meet the reed and then it doesn't feel so stuffy so inefficient so let's look at a couple other mouthpieces by the way here is the very first new york meyer bros this is the true flex true flex facing and this does not look like a meyer at all this is uh this looks more period this looks almost like an early salmer there's really no rollover at all and this is a very dark sounding new york meyer Let's look at some alternatives that I think are superior to the modern Meyer. In the Meyer tradition, this is a Morgan Excalibur. And that looks a lot like that really great Meyer Bros. It's still not quite as much work, but it slopes in. Um, the sidewalls are better. The chamber is more like a Bros. This, it's almost blatant how my Selmer was copying uh, the Meyer Bros with how fat the blank is, the lines and everything. And let's look at the baffle. Yep. You see, that begins, once again, in that same spot. It almost has a, jo a jumbo java kind of, kind of thing going on. Uh, but at that same spot, right where the break is, compare that with the best bros, New York bros. Yeah, it's in the same spot right where the break is this is more elegantly finished but you get what I'm saying uh, the chamber of this uh oh that's not like a Meyer at all that's got a little it's like it's unfinished and that's what holds this one back um, the baffle is great the, uh, the facing is okay that's what holds that back. Um, even a white Brillhart. Let's see how this picks up. Yeah, and these aren't known for good roller baffles, but uh, yeah, that, that's definitely more complex and more uh, extreme than the modern Meyer. Yeah, look how boring that is. I think the air is getting interrupted here. It needs more work. It needs to be more intelligently understood how this affects the heart of the reed, affects the facing, and then goes into the chamber, which now you see is, is not bad. It's better than that Selmer spirit, but it's too tight. Last one to show you, my favorite Barry Meyer Bros of all time. Early one, no gap in the table. These are the earliest New York USAs. This one's been through the war, but I've played so many. So very many New York and Meyer Bros, New York USA Meyer Bros. For Baron, this is my favorite one. And that, that look how hand you see all these little refractions of light because it's handcrafted. That is such an extreme baffle. I think you need a little more baffle for Barry. But um, yeah, look at that. Look at that perfect opening. But that baffle there is most similar to. That first perfect rose. So, what makes a Meyer? Many things. Many things contribute to the overall design. But for me, that's the money right there. That's the cash. That baffle is what makes the Meyer.